In 1863, an archaeologist by the name of Charles Chimpoise was searching for artifacts in Samothrace, Greece. In the ruins, he ended up finding a magnificent statue that, in his words, was a winged victory of colossal dimension. The pieces of the sculpture were carefully reassembled, and in the 1880s, it was moved to the Louvre, where it sits today. While the arms and the head of the statue were never found, it still stands and is appreciated by millions of viewers each year. This is known as the Winged Victory of Samothrace, aka the Goddess of Nike or the Goddess of Victory. And I want to see, with the help of a little modern technology, if we can recreate this sculpture in bronze. Splinter here is pretty good at running a 3D printer, so I had him print off a bunch of the pieces in PLA. So now I have all the pieces printed, just like the original, I need to put it all back together. I printed these with a brim, so I have to remove that and get the edges as smooth as I can so I can blend in the seams later on. I need the sculpture to be hollow, and I printed these with a the bottom and the top. So to get them off, I heated up a utility knife and melted through the plastic so I could remove it and have an open bottom and top to the piece. The base piece I accidentally printed with infill. It's a grid-like structure that keeps everything strong, but it's really a pain to remove. Pretty sure I can say that Michelangelo da Vinci never had this problem. I shouldn't complain because this is still a heck of a lot easier than making it out of stone. Once that's done, I make sure the surfaces are flat and start assembling the piece. Initially, I put a little molten wax on the seams to help hold it together. Since I'm going to be burning all this out in the kiln, I decided I wanted to use wax. I do the same process for each piece. I realized I needed something a little bit stronger than just wax though, so I switched to some super glue. One thing about this print that I think is interesting is I know it's an exact scan of the original. Because even on the back of the wing, it has the supports that are holding the pieces of stone together. So I got the body piece together, and this will work very well for a casting. Only thing I have to weld will be the wings, because they're going to be a little bit too big for my flasks. Because I do investment casting, I need to put it in a flask. I don't do ceramic shell. This is the biggest flask I have, just a piece of pipe, and it's barely tall enough. I think it'll work. I almost had to hammer my flask into more of an oval shape, but it barely fit, so it'll work. Blending in the seams was a bit more of a project than I thought it would be. I used wax and tried to rub out the seams. Then I'd use my thumb to try to smooth it down. It worked pretty well, but man, it was a time-consuming project. Just carving the wax out of these folds and the fabric is hard enough. I can't imagine how much time and patience it took to carve this out of stone. I used my sandblaster to try to blast away any print lines left behind. It helped a little, but I still needed to go over it again to double check. 
I had to re-blend in some of the seams and do a better job. With a little more sanding and then a little more wax, we finally got to where I think it's pretty good. I sprayed it with some clear coat just to be sure to blend in any print lines that were missed. The walls of this print were so thin I decided I needed to thicken them up for the bronze to flow through properly. So I took some very low temperature molten wax and added a layer on the inside. There's a fine line between too thick and too thin. Too thick and you get metal shrinkage. Too thin and it's hard to get it to flow. So that's got a light wax coating in there and that should help thicken it just a bit. Because this is hollow and there's such a long tube, when this melts out, there's gonna be a stick of investment in there that's not gonna be very stable. So to strengthen it and make sure it doesn't break off and kick one way or the other, where the wings are here, I'm gonna add some chaplets. Some little brass pins just to keep that investment core in place. To insert them, I simply heated up the ends and then jammed them in. It doesn't need to be too hot though. I need to add the sprues, but since my flask isn't all that long, I need to add these at as low profile as possible just to let it fit. That's not ideal, but that's the only way I'm going to get this to work. I'll have the metal come down this long sprue and it will fill from the bottom up. Hopefully that'll give me minimal metal turbulence and have a nice even flow as the sculpture is filled. Typically I'll put the investment in the flask in a vacuum chamber to suck out any bubbles that are left behind, but it's just a little too big for my chamber. So instead I'll just pour the investment very slowly and hope for the best. When that's done, I burn out the PLA the same as I would with lost wax casting. But PLA doesn't burn out as cleanly as wax does, so I'm going to take an air compressor and blow out the flask to make sure there's no ash inside. Then I put it back in the kiln to keep it hot and ready at pouring temperature. Then I get the metal melting. put this on my vacuum table to try to improve the chances of a successful cast. This is about the max size I can handle with my operation. This bucket is barely big enough to quench it. So far it looks really good, but let's sandblast it and see for sure. At first glance, it looks amazing, but, but there's some major flaws. For one, on the base, I have some giant holes on this side and on this side and in the back. Now, I think the reason was I didn't have enough metal flowing through it. There was some air that got trapped in there and there wasn't enough metal flowing through it to blow those air bubbles out. Once it filled, the air just kind of pooled up there, pocketed there, and since it was so far removed from the vacuum, the air wasn't drawn through. So I should have had a bigger flask. Also, right up on the neckline, I have some holes, several holes. All along this fabric seam, this fabric seam, this fabric seam. What I'm thinking happened was it just wasn't thick enough. I did coat the inside with wax, but maybe not enough. I can try to fix these flaws with my welder. 
and it'll either work or it'll completely destroy it. <laughs> Nice that those are the only two options. So upon closer inspection, there's just too much to fix. The surface finish is beautiful, but there's just too many holes, too many flaws. We're gonna have to start again. So this will be part one. Come on back for part two. It's gonna be a fun one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.